Hi, what's up everybody? Once again, it's brand man Sean and today going over the come up of Ella May from the UK or as those in London would call it across the pond. Talking about the Atlantic Ocean cuz? Ponds ain't that big where I come from cuz. She's an R&B singer. She has a lot of great music and at least five songs that I just feel like are just super hits. Loved her music for a good minute but that's not what this is about. We got three lessons that you can learn from her rise so far so let's throw it back for a second. In 2000 2014, LMA kinda hit the scene with this group named Arise on the X Factor, but they didn't make it past the initial auditions, didn't go too far. Looking back at that, you're like, why was she with these girls? Or if anything, she should have been considered the lead singer because her voice stands out so much between them other girls. Not saying they can't sing at all, but I think LMA would have went way further if she just sang by herself. But that didn't work out broke up as a group. And that's lesson number one. Sometimes you got to change your situation up because a lot of people are moving in situations that won't allow them to get to their potential. In that time, she uploaded four original tracks to SoundCloud, but then the game started to change. She uploaded a short 15 second cover of her singing Fetty Wap's 679. I'm like, yeah, he's mine. I wonder when he'll be mine. He walked past that press, rewind to see that face one more time. And I got this soda. And people started to love it. According to her, she probably only had like 500 followers at this time. But somehow, some way, this divine moment in the universe, she got posted to the shade room. If y'all don't know the shade room, the shade room got followers, y'all. And from there, things started to move. Her follower game was going up and up and she continued to post these 15 second covers as people requested her to sing various songs. She started to galvanize this fan base. And little known to her, at some point she did a cover of Tupac, Get Your Head Up. Ooh, child, things will get brighter. Yeah, yeah. And it started to blow up in LA. And those were the words that she used, but I think the better word is it really just started to get around between a certain group of people. A group of people that mattered, which led to DJ Mustard reaching out to her. Mustard slid in them DMs, just wanting to know what her situation was. Not going to dig into the details, but she had about 50,000 followers at this time. And a month later, she got a chance to actually meet him in person and work with him. And ultimately, she got signed as the very first artist to DJ Mustard's 10 Summers Late. There's kind of two lessons in this, in my opinion. First of all, when she was posting Instagram covers, she made them 15 second clips. And for me personally, I like doing short clips on Instagram because it's made for that short attention span in that audience. Plus, it leaves people wanting more. It doesn't give people any time to really say, hey, she's not as good as I thought she was, or to get tired of hearing what they heard to just go to click to something else. But number three, the even bigger lesson in that is put yourself in a position to be seen. A lot of singers are not putting themselves out there. They don't have anything online. I don't care if you're on Instagram and you were just this silhouette and nobody can actually see you see you, but they just see the silhouette singing and maybe you become a running joke. People will be like, hey, she got this amazing voice, but maybe she ugly as hell. That's why she don't show her face. At least they start to know who you are in some sense. As a matter of fact, that'd probably be a lit little campaign, especially when the girl ended up being some kind of stereotypical version of beautiful. People were like, whoa, somebody do that because I don't got no time. And also, if I was managing a singer, along the lines of putting yourself in a position to be seen, I would have them posted by other influencers. I wouldn't even spend any time trying to advertise their songs. If they really had a voice like that and had a nice little presence, if I spent money, I would pay for them to be posted on places like the Shade Room or just individual people's pages that have a lot of followers. We'll get into why that's more effective in another video though. I don't think I mentioned a timeline yet, but Arise, when she was with that group on X Factor, that was 2014, when she started doing the Instagram covers, Fetty Wap 679, a lot of people know Fetty Wap 2015, and that's when she also got signed to DJ Mustard. It wasn't until February 2016 where she released her first EP, and then she releases the next EP, change and then in february 2017 she dropped ray and also in the meantime she was also an opener on kalani's sweet sexy savage tour the lesson in this portion is she was signed in 2015 to dj mustard it's been two years and there's still a lot of people that don't know who she is 
It is a process. So many people have to stop trying to blow up because you set yourself up better if you do what she's been doing, which is building a fan base, a real fan base. She's dropping projects. They didn't start with an album. She let people get used to her sound, used to her vibe and what she has to offer. Learning a lot at the same time. And now she's coming out with an album pretty soon. How soon exactly? I don't know, but I know her next project will be her album. I would not be surprised if it does well because now she has a real foundation fan wise including me that's it y'all know what to do though hit that subscribe button